Hey, where you been? I've been thinking, and I've come up with this. What does it have to do with you? Let's go back to the globe. Now, you may have noticed that as we looked at the various places pot comes from originally on the planet, we did not ever stop on North America or Europe or anywhere else outside of those particular regions. Now, I'd be very surprised if Mother Nature did not try to grow pot everywhere else, but it only survived where it did. In more temperate areas, cannabis survived as hemp, which can be found in the more northern climes, but it doesn't produce much THC. Now, it wasn't until the 60s and 70s that anyone wanted to grow pot in their backyard outside of the places it originally flourished in. We took bag seeds, which were Colombian, Mexican, and Southeast Asian sativas, and planted them from San Antonio to Anchorage and everywhere in between. None of them came to maturity because they were outside of their natural latitude. We see it all the time with ornamental garden plants, beautiful shrubs and bushes here, but when you see them in their tropical countries they come from, they're gigantic and generally produce flowers that you never knew existed. Now, just like those sativas, they didn't produce flowers. <clears throat> they grew great everywhere, lush, green, mostly huge things, never a bud. <clears throat> but it wasn't long after that, the hash-making variety found its way into the hands of us growers, strains that matured much earlier in their land of origin, early to mid-September usually. But remember, this was roughly at the same latitude as Los Angeles and at eight to 10,000 feet in very specialized valleys. The pot that grew from those indica seeds was certainly much more mature than the sativas we grew, but I'm not so sure it was completely mature. To take a seed and grow it under different conditions than where it comes from, no matter what those differences are, one would think that the final product is gonna be different as well. The average elevation in North America is about 2,500 feet. We already knew and accepted that the sativa would not work, but little thought was given to this when it came to the indica. The simple fact that these plants develop buds may have led us to believe that this was actually mature. I really can't see how this was any different. I've smoked plenty of great outdoor pot growing from all over North America. But quite frankly, it's not nearly as good as pot grown close to the equator or indoor. In most locations north of the 38th parallel, we've settled for quantity rather than quality. And it's the only cash crop in the world that we do this with. You don't see anyone trying to grow oranges in Toronto or cotton in New England because it just won't work. This does not mean that gardeners cannot work with this plant to improve its chances but this is not something that can be done very quickly. Recently, I spoke with a longtime wheat farmer who told me that a scientist recently came up with a dwarf strain of wheat. With full-blown science available to him and years and years of research, it still took him 15 years to develop it just for that one trait. Now, many pot farmers have worked with their strains at their latitude and in their conditions and have been able to find and crossbreed with earlier and earlier finishers, and they'll be ending up with plants that are much more acclimatized. But in today's vast market of choices, it's very difficult to say what will work at all latitudes and under all conditions. Because of difficulty in getting plants to finish, we were taught that to leave our plants in the ground until the threat of frost approaches or inclement weather would uh, make us harvest. Now this doesn't sound appear to be sound farming practice given what we are after are mature and intact resin glands. The weeks preceding the frost may not be doing your buds any good and may well be doing damage to those precious glands. If we are not to ignore the botany, it is my thought that we should be getting our plants to finish during the hottest, driest part of our autumn, no matter where you are. <clears throat> I get calls from people at every latitude who want to grow pot outside, from Iceland to Sweden, Alaska, Ireland, Russia, Peru, Chile, places where hardly anything grows, let alone an equatorial annual plant. The demands being placed on this plant to perform everywhere are unreasonable at best. 
the reality of all this to me is that if you're living anywhere north of Los Angeles, you should explore strains that are finishing much, much earlier than you might otherwise to ensure good weather. Seeds that are produced outside are going to have a better chance when planted outside than those that are produced indoors. However, this would not apply to the more southerly latitudes as the conditions there are generally good enough to grow just about anything, no matter how it was produced. Growers should seriously consider ruderalis strains. If you recall, they are coming from 35 to 60 degrees north latitude. So if you're in Chicago at 43 degrees, the idea here is to have plants that aren't so dependent on the change of day length to kick them in the flowering. <clears throat> they do it at the, a certain time in their lives rather than uh, waiting for the end of the season. This gives you, the grower, the opportunity to harvest for the best weather you can. Time it out perfectly for those hot, dry days of late August, very early September. Other alternatives, of course, to this is greenhousing and shading your plants to get them to finish again in those more perfect conditions for it. Now, the downside to it, of course, if you're talking about having plants that you're going to harvest earlier, they're going to be smaller, but come on, I'd rather have better pot. I'll plant a whole bunch more plants to get my harvest and yield the same as it was. I'd rather have better pot. But then on the other hand, I believe it was Socrates who once said, all that I know is I know nothing. But I could be wrong about that. So there you go. <clears throat> it's got to be 420 somewhere by now. So i got to roll up another joint and write the 425 news. See you then. Thanks for watching. Peace and pot.